goodness. One day, one day we'll actually we'll we'll get back on it with the popcorn. Game. I was really trying to get us there. I know. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> God, we sound so much better now. Now that you don't Dude. have your, are you okay? Meet with me saying like, hey, by the way, everybody, uh, we hung out, podcasted, masked. I didn't get the flu. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I also didn't know I had flu at the time, but well, yeah, no. it's going around, folks. <laughs> yeah, so, well, welcome back to the podcast, everybody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> as as you're finishing up your water. I'm Heather. My pronouns are she, her. And my name is Jared. My pronouns are he, him. And welcome back to our show. Oh, and my pronouns. No. <laughs> My name is Jaren. <laughs> my name is Jaren, and my pronouns are he, him, and we are your hosts of Typically Divergent Podcast. Welcome back to Welcome the show. Welcome back, everyone. Maybe we should title this episode, My Name is Jaren. This, <laughs> actually, I was thinking about the title earlier today, but uh, my name is Jaren, pronounced, said like Jared, but with O-N instead of E-D. Yes. But I don't have E-D. Yes. In case there anybody, we go. yeah, there we I, go. I don't have, I don't know if anybody else. I, I get a lot of advertisements for um, erectile dysfunction on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Oh, oh, it took me a minute. I, I had a moment. <laughs> it's okay. I was like, <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, Heather and I were just talking about the importance of masking, <laughs> and uh, last week we said that she had a cold. Turns out, uh, she got. She went and got tested for precautionary reasons for COVID and the flu just because. Yep. Heather found out on Monday that she had the flu. Yeah. And uh, I did not get it. If you still, yeah, she, she's feeling much better today. It was, it was not, it was not a good week. (laughs) I did not expect to get the flu. You know, I I had got the vaccine, but I, we've, there's been a lot of flu going around in the community so oh goodness okay so i i gotta ask you i know i know you don't pay attention to tiktoks but you do i see the, I see you the see reels the reels you I see, see the, the reels. reels have you seen the new like zoolander meme starting to pop up yet no i know the reels are actually somewhat behind tiktok stuff to oh, begin yeah. with but like i mean but you got the corn thing pretty fast well that's because of podcasts oh, oh okay <laughs> okay okay well so these Zoolander memes, well, really like they're they're saying memes, but like it's like the gifts and different scenes from the movie right. are showing up as like different like point of view, like you're oh, this or you're so that or many like point of view. Yeah. And there's been I don't know what it is. I don't actually know the history of who started it, but I'm here for it. Like mm-hmm. fucking love Zoolander. Mm-hmm. It's definitely like a quintessential millennial I movie. Nicholas's I favorite freaking movie. love it. I think it's one of his favorite movies. I can't remember. Let's just say the Zoolander meme TikToks are so hot right now. <laughs> so I, I, okay. So the Facebook reels are definitely behind. Yes. Um, I know that I get like the generic ones, but I still like get some like decent ones and whatnot. But like, I know that there's better content out there on TikTok that I just, I'm not willing to put it on my phone to yeah. watch those. Oh, it's, I mean, yeah. Cause TikTok is addicting. It's all, I mean, it's a whole nother ball yeah. game and yeah. Kudos to you for not <laughs> falling into that like I have yeah, in I've 2020. Been, I tried. I tried. I couldn't stay away. <laughs> I have been so strong. I don't know yeah. what it was. Good for you. Good for Thanks. you. I mean, it's it's fun. It's just, yes, it can get addicting. Um, but anyways. There so. was a, speaking of TikTok oh. and it, addicting, there, yeah. was a, there was a commercial for it on uh, some streaming service that we were using to watch Parks and Rec the other day, and I looked at him mm. and I said, "TikTok has commercials." Which, oh yeah, there's you... been TikTok commercials on YouTube forever now. Okay, folks. Yeah, in 2020, um, they're called ads these days. But when we were kids, they were commercials. Oh yeah, because, that's true. Because a commercial was only on television or on radio, and so it was anywhere between 15 to 60, sometimes 90 seconds long, depending on the company dude kids these days cannot sit that long well now ads are anywhere between they may be like seconds, fucking 10 seconds or less 10 seconds to uh two minutes and, yeah and they're called ads now because they are on social media platforms streaming services they're on your radio yeah so that's really weird but like okay oh, so you said you said uh memes but more like gifs hate folks uh memes are a photo with words a gif is a clip of visual art. 
I, I love just, how we're making this designation I, right now. I just, I have to, I, people are like, oh my gosh, oh my God, LOL, look at this meme. And it's a video. It's not, no, a meme is yeah, a Yeah, there photo. is a difference, right? So yes. like, because we created, like, we, we overall created meme culture and then memes went to GIFs. Dozer would like to comment on the meme and gif discussion. Do you guys I think. hear that? He's <laughs> he's like, will someone please finally understand the difference between memes and gifs? <laughs> memes and gifs. Yeah, Chad. <laughs> Kyle. Oh, Kyle. <laughs> Quiet, Karen. Brian. <laughs> oh, I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I met one Brian that I did not like, and he likes Dave Matthews Band, and I don't like people that like Dave Matthews Band. I've actually never had a problem with a Brian. I just know, and I actually I know Brian's who like I I get along with just fine. I think it's just a name that I've heard along with the Chad Kyle thing. Yeah. Chad Kyle Brian. I think those are the three main ones. Yeah, I see some on Facebook, or like con- a combo of them. I see something on Brad. Facebook all the time that's like guys that name starts with J are toxic, and I was like for a while i was like i'm not toxic and then through some growth i'm like i've had some toxic behaviors before jay do you know the first thing i thought of i was like how do i turn chad into jad, jad. so like jad i thought of jad <laughs> that was the first name i thought of was jad <laughs> i'm like that what <laughs> i'm like wait so a jad what what is that who is that but yeah so those those zoolander tiktoks they're super super awesome and i'm i'm a, I'm a big fan they're they're funny and oh and they do them to like a lot of them are to this song like they see us in the club and they're acting Watching real nice see us from the floor they be watching all night repeat it hurt the body baby give it to me give it to me give it to me we <laughs> see you fuck your body give it to me give it to me give it to me timbaland yes timbaland with, and nelly Furtado. and then yes. justin timberlake <laughs> that Justin Timberlake was in some of them or whatever. Oh, I think he was in that God. one. That was the one that he was in, I think. He had like they each had like a yeah. a section, right? And yes. um but it's like the remix. There's like a TikTok remix version of it that's going on with these TikToks and it'll be like Zoolander and um oh god, what's his name? Uh uh Hansel. Yeah, because Hansel's so hot right now. Zoolander TikTok so hot right now uh, that like they'd be like walking and it's doing it to this song and it's uh I just I love it sorry I'm just like envisioning them it's okay I just I know that things always come back around that's fine but I didn't think that at my point in my life that I would be having so many younger adults and teenagers have so much interest in uh somebody at nicholas's job was like oh you guys are into they were talking about pokemon and he mm. was, they were like oh so are you into vintage video gaming <laughs> your face right now i wish our audience I wish, could see I it wish i'm pointing at my uh, fake camera in front of us and i just want everybody to see what this face looks like it's really unfortunate to be told that yeah so you just um, turned into a capricorn from a libra for a minute there i sure as fuck did yeah you did oh yeah God, bitch you so did <laughs> well, um so <sighs> They, I was 11 when they came out with their first album, Tattoo. Mm. Mm-hmm. All the things she said, all the things she said, running, running through my head, running through my head, running through my head. <laughs> so I that was, was one of my first MP3 songs. I had one of those MP3 players that held five songs. Okay, y'all, five fucking songs, and it took like two Sorry. hours to download those five songs onto it from the computer. You had to like plug it in through like usb generation Mm -hmm. one or even like a micro usb thing and yeah i had that song so the sped up remix of that song has gotten very popular on tiktok because i'm seeing it on the reels and i was very heavy big into into tiktok into tattoo oh yeah well when i was in middle school high school that was one of like the very like more open controversial like, bands well but like with lgbtqia like yes even though they weren't uh, real right like well okay no. so so clarify so they were not they were i not literally real. did not know that no they were originally in a band together when they were kids okay and then as they got older their manager said we're gonna take the two of you and create this fake lesbian relationship <gasps> And I we're going to piss that off the Russians, now. but it's going to get people's attention. And uh, secretly, men love women on women shit, even in yeah, Russia. I mean, true, true. But they love to hate on two men holding hands in public. Oh but they God. will get down to some fucking 
Oh my God. Yep. I did not know. <gasps> I'm having a moment. Yep. So I, li- I was listening to Tattoo today. <laughs> I, I love them. I, I bring that song back up. Like, I, I don't know. I thought it was so cool because also. I wouldn't say like my mom specifically, but like just like parents in general mm-hmm. were so up in arms about it because it was like, oh my god, let's do this kissing. I oh. don't want my daughter watching this. I had my mom when this was when Kim was married to. That's a cute sound, Dozer. Dozer, yeah. do you agree? Yeah, Talk do you agree? Up. It was it was crazy. It's a crazy time. When Kim was married to her second husband, he had an eBay account, and I had oh him. Gosh, yeah. I gave him 40 some dollars to purchase um, a Russian exclusive release only. Like, oh, wow. Like three, two disc uh, CD mm-hmm. case, case, whatever. Um, wow. And it, my mom was pissed. I, why is my son listening to this with these two girls? And I had explained the story to her. Mm-hmm. And this was, of course, like somewhere mm-hmm. around the time that I had been forced out of the closet. So, like, she mm-hmm. is thinking that, like, you know, I'm being influenced, but really, I was just looking oh my for God. representation. Which, hey, any other millennial gay out there? Did you ever also like watch Queer as Folk really late at night, um, and then have like your your return to last channel button on to like Nickelodeon, and then you would watch these adult actors portray gay relationships on mm. television when while your parents were still awake because they were always on really late at night. Mm. And like HBO or something. Yes. Mm. Back when HBO yes. used to have sex. That weird stuff at night. Porn. It shouldn't even be weird, but like, yeah, stuff at night. <laughs> yeah. Wow, we've really diverted. So yeah, we have. So welcome to Typically Divergent. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Typically Divergent. Um, I do want to bring up one more thing okay. on my mind just because it's it's happening right now. And like, have you seen the thing about the collectible, the new Trump cards, the Trump cards, the (sighs) brand new, most wonderful collectible cards? Like, you know, we've gone from Pokemon to Trump cards. So I, I did see something on it. And Nicholas said that it showed me a video and he was like, this can't possibly be real. Oh, I know. Right. It looks so fake and scammy, too. Like, yes, it's like it's legit and it's sold out in under 12 hours. And I just I can't believe that somebody. Okay, so like the video that I saw of him speaking like that wasn't really him. Right. It was, was where he's really talking him? about how he's like, it's your favorite president, better Pro- than Lincoln and, and better George than Washington. Washington. And yeah. he's like, and they're like baseball cards, but hopefully more exciting. No, that's legit him. Yes. That's legit him. This isn't a joke. No, it's a legit thing. And because of how many they had, um, they don't actually like, it's kind of mysterious where the money like can go to and like who it will actually go to in the end. And he said but you it's can like, buy them with crypto it's money. Like 4. 5 mil- it's like 4.5 million. It's like four point million, I think, technically, once they were all sold out. So, Sorry yeah. about my dog, everybody. He is just on one today. He's very excited. He's so, showing us all his toys. The surprise didn't happen this week, folks. Next week, we will be recording in the podcast studio slash office of our house. So I'm excited for you. How are you feeling about everything? <sighs> okay, so <laughs> let's get into it. We'll just go ahead and combine this with like my mental health. Sure. Yes, that okay. sounds good. This week, Nicholas and I redid the floors. His father also helped us two out of the four days that we've been working on those rooms upstairs Mm -hmm. that dining room behind me Mm -hmm. you can see is very empty for four and a half days it's very empty as in like everything has its place minus oh okay minus that little pile of stuff that's getting donated or or thrown away or whatever everything that was up in those two rooms and we're downstairs in that dining room Mm -hmm. and so it was like chaos chaos here i am moving into i left the apartment i'm moving here this is supposed to be a safe space i feel that and we're also renovating Mm -hmm. and and you're a libra and i am a libra (laughs) and i'm I'm also i'm also my mother's son and so like things have to be in their place i need to have a sense of serenity Mm -hmm. and so the floors had to be done before we could take that stuff from the apartment from the the big furniture before we bring the furniture over it had to get done otherwise that stuff was gonna it was gonna be worse in that room Mm -hmm. so all week i've been like my anxiety has been really high and so i was like 
well, you know, maybe Nicholas is stressed out Mm -hmm. because his home is now getting renovated on a time frame that wasn't necessarily ideal. And there is a time crunch because he took four days off of work to for us to work on it. Mm, mm-hmm. And then things were not going as planned, like stuff wasn't drying in time or whatever. Well, I was internalizing what we were going through and being like, this man is going through all of this stress because of me. This is my fault. Mm. And he kept, re- he kept reassuring me. This is for us. This is our home. Nothing has to be perfect. It means more if we do it together. Mm-hmm. And I wanted that. And we wanted to do these projects together. But this was such a stressful one. And along with like having just moved. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, I thought I was going to land on a nice like, little safe pad. And now like all of this stuff is happening. So I was taking his stress and saying, this is all my fault. Mm. And um, while we were painting the what is going to be the video game room. Mm-hmm. Um, my So as a kid, I remember having this memory of um, my mother not allowing me to like take part in painting walls and stuff, even as like a teenager. Oh, and yeah. being like, no, you're going to get streaks in the walls. It, it's going to be a mess. Oh, memory you're, unlocked. You're I totally get up. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I think there's a lot of prior mm-hmm. parents out there who yeah yeah you hear about that yeah mm-hmm. and so i was like we're painting and he he was like i can hear you breathing really heavy are you okay and i was like i'm having an anxiety attack right now and he was like Aww. why and i said because i'm doing something i've never been allowed to do yeah and, and so, so also it feels for it and you feel that pressure mm-hmm. from the past right of like it, it better be, be perfect. perfect even though you were never given the chance to just try yeah so mu- remember like how we're talking about like mm-hmm. you you don't in the the one of the prior episodes um imposter syndrome just yeah. where like you don't get the chance to fail and fail gracefully mm-hmm. right yeah yeah and so he was like it doesn't have to be perfect i'm like but it does. And he's like, baby, like mm. we're doing this for us. Like it's fine. Yeah. And then because of EMDR where you are taking um, negative core beliefs and then switching them into positive ones and creating these new connections. And so as I am like what I like to call um, peeling back the layers of an artichoke because mm-hmm. it's so ridiculous. I like that. Yeah. I'm peeling back these layers as I continue to paint mm-hmm. and I unlock that memory and then it clicked. I, I literally felt it in my mind click where it was like, I'm home now. Everything's fine. We're safe. And then all of the anxiety left. Oh, that's so good, though. Yeah. That's so good. I sat there and I said, Jaren, if you and Nicholas went and bought a house together, you'd be going through this anyway. Oh, yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. He's already I mean, living Spencer here. and I still have, like, multiple things that we want to do. Yeah. And, like, I bought the house. Like, Yeah. yeah. What, what's the difference? Because he got he was here before you. Yeah, it and, doesn't matter. And so that that makes it what twice as stressful? No, it shouldn't. You guys are doing these things together. You'd be doing them together if you bought a house together. And mm-hmm. so then everything just was like, mm. I'm ha- I'm safe. I'm home. It's like your perspective mm-hmm. had to click, and like, it, well, but it also shows that EMDR stuff is really helping yeah. and working because like you were able to like pull yourself out. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. that's so good. Yeah, and I'm seriously really happy for you that that like you were able to go through the process, like uh-huh. right process through the feelings. You know. And, validate and them the but then get through it yeah and then actively use the tools that i've been given yes like it yeah. feels nice when it works right yes. like and that's not to say that every time has to like is going to be successful but like to see the success and mm-hmm. like the progression of mm-hmm. you know what you've been working on in therapy yep. applied to something you know just your daily life right yeah because if you can do it once then you can do it again buddy yes i don't know if you can tell but right now all the lights are really bright mm-hmm. i said I want you to know that another thing that would help me feel more comfortable here is we need some more brightness because shadows are a trigger. Mm. Things that are too dark are, are, tr- are a bit of a trigger from my most traumatic evening. I need to be able to see every damn crack and corner. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, sometimes if I look at somebody's eyes and they and they seem just a little too dark, mm-hmm. I, my, my PTSD kicks in, kicks in. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, you've told me that. And he goes, baby, we can have, we can get some more lamps in the house. We can, um, what we can do is we can set up the, uh, the Alexas. I'm not a fan. We can talk about those another day, <laughs> but, um, he goes, we can set something up where you can say a, a specific command mm-hmm. and every light will come on as bright as you need it to be. And yeah, this if man, you get the, the, the special kinds of bulbs or the, yeah, we have them in our living room now. You can change the are. colors too, to what you prefer. Yeah. Those drapes up there, 
Mm-hmm. At one point, they were dark, and I told him, I said, that sometimes they scare me at night because I think there's somebody standing there. Can we get something a little brighter? Man went and bought white drapes. Aww. Didn't even have to ask him to do it. He just went and did it. <laughs> That's really, really fucking sweet. I know. You know what my ex would have said? Go buy your own fucking drapes. Yeah, or figure it out, or like, like can you like get past that kind of thing right yeah. like well if that's what you want then you it's like do a it. judgment yeah or yeah somebody that i trauma bonded with yeah mm-hmm. and it's just like this is this is what love is like this man yeah. is this man is going through uh, in my eyes great lengths mm-hmm. to show me that i am loved that i am safe mm-hmm. that everything's gonna be okay mm-hmm. well that's my mental awesome. health has been really great and it's just so nice to know that this I, yeah i'm safe yeah and well i and no true longer love feel is, like i'm at somebody true else's love home. is also someone who is willing to make you feel safe yeah you're not doing anything like like th- there's nothing toxic right like it's no. it's like there are things that like about you that you're working on and that that you're going through and your partner wants to understand that about you, mm-hmm. wants to learn about that and how they can help you out. And then vice versa, you're there for them. And like, I think that's the part in partnerships where like, if you're very much a 50, 50 transactional person, mm-hmm. you'll never get to that stage no. of like a relationship. And like, to me, at least personally, especially with my past as well, that's the real beauty in a relationship is that sometimes and it could be months. Mm-hmm. Someone could be given a lot in that relationship to learn and to work with that person because that other person needs the extra help. A year from now, it switches, right? And like that back and forth yep. happens. Like as long as both parties are willing to help the other person out, I feel like that's key. And like really listening and understanding and then working on that. That's, that was a really nice story. I really like that. Thank you. That was a really and good then- share. Um, I also had my last day at my second job this Ooh. week, folks, and we're talking about careers. Yes, let's but, get into it. Well, do you want to talk about your mental health? Because you didn't get a chance to do that yet. Sure. So, well, okay. So I'm I'm having a bit of anxiety today. My anxiety is kind of up, and I just haven't felt well at all this week. It's been a lot of um, really just needing to rest and to just – get better like physically just like the flu Mm -hmm. has really knocked me out it really does get to my like when I've had flu in the past and including this time it really gets to my asthma have a lot of trouble breathing I'm finally getting better and I just I don't know I'm just having anxiety I feel a lot of guilt when I do get sick actually with like productivity whether that means like you know I'm not feeling as productive in the home or whether that's like workplace type of things where it's like oh you feel bad because like you had a call off or something like that and that's that's me to myself like that's Mm -hmm. that's a you know whether that's imposter syndrome at play or something else like I just feel a lot of guilt when I'm not feeling well and feeling like I need to take that time for myself and that's always a work in progress for me society before us has had put such a bad view on oh well are you dying in the hospital? Then you need to be as productive as you possibly can. And then when you get to that point where you're like, I, I literally couldn't even lift a finger if I wanted to, then all of a sudden you, you're getting all of the shame yeah. and guilt from your, your own self, same self guilt and self shame. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, our generation is really bad for having that. Oh yeah. It's, it's actually taken me a long time to get to the point where I actually take time for myself if I need a day, like because I'm sick or something like that in, in my past, like I've had trouble doing that. And then you get to the point where you do do that. And then you feel like this immense, <laughs> do, do. <laughs> do, do. when you do call off or you do take, like, you know, you say, I'm not going to do the chores today at home. Right. Mm. Like it doesn't always have to be about work. It can even just be about at home too. And this could also relate to mental health too it doesn't have to be physical but let's say you're sick right like and just having to say to yourself it is okay then I am not giving a hundred percent today it is okay if I'm giving literally 10 percent today or nothing at all and I need to lay in bed to recover because otherwise it's like I think because I actually did try to push myself earlier that's actually why I I I mean I could have gotten worse it could have just been the illness but like also could have gotten worse because I actually did try to push myself I don't know I, it's just, it's one of those things like, and I've gotten to that point where it's like, okay, try to be better about recognizing when I'm not feeling well, but then I still like deal with this guilt of like, oh, well I gave myself the time, but 
you know, yeah. here I am falling behind in these other things. Yeah. So anyways, because my mental health is kind of like not in the greatest place because of also not feeling well, mm -hmm. I just didn't want to draw a tarot card either because my anxiety is just kind of like up on all of that. So yeah. um, just being honest with our audience, it's how I'm yeah. feeling. Yeah, that's really okay. I drew one, but I wasn't like feeling actually doing the drawing. So... I actually drew two. The first one was a card that I'd already drawn before. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <the> <laughs> That's a sign maybe though. <laughs> the audience wants to hear more about more cards that I have. So then I drew another one and it does not relate to a single damn thing. So you were probably meant to actually draw the one that you did draw. Just probably. that it's like, again, relating to the things. Well, I pulled the golden child. So to remember <laughs> my powers and da 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 da. <laughs> I've talked about it in two episodes previously. That's I've okay. <laughs> Because of the work that I did this week and pulling that memory. Oh, and I took Nicholas out on a date this week to get him out of the house because <gasps> that's cute. Because he was, we, I was like, baby, we got to get you out of the house. And he was stressed about not being Aww. in the house working on it. And I said, you took four days off to do projects. Yes. However, that doesn't mean that these four days don't have, don't have to be miserable. Let's get you out of the house. Let me mm -hmm. take you on a date. So we went and did this thing that I did once when I was a child. Ever since I was in preschool, I've wanted to go to this. Okay. So we went. It was the gingerbread festival or festival of gingerbread. I didn't even know they had that. Yeah, it was at what? the museum oh, center. that's so cute. The festival of gingerbread is something that groups or students or individuals and even like adults and teenagers can enter. Oh, that's fun. It's a contest. Fun. And I did it as a, when I was in preschool. And I never Aww. get to go to this because I either always never think about it or I don't have anybody I want to go with. Okay, this is super cute. And I love so this. And so I was like, it's really important for me to be going with you because around that time in my life was the feeling of safety was mm. taken away from me because we then moved. Okay. Um, which it wasn't a big deal, but it was still like I was going to a new school, new home that we built. All you remember stuff. it. I remember it. And yeah. so little Jaren wanted to go. And so I said, we're doing this. And I'm taking you out for dinner. So anyway, the topic for today, everybody, <laughs> <laughs> we are going to talk about me leaving a corporate entity. Ooh. Um, I am no longer employed by this business. However, this is still a very powerful company. And so for the next 30 days after this episode is released, I still cannot say where I worked because... I am still maintaining health insurance for the last 30 days after employment. So I am not saying the name of the company or too much information because I am not going to get in trouble. And if anybody out there thinks that they are going to try and get me in trouble because I know how the employees are, don't fucking come for me. Disclaimer that opinions are opinions and they're of your own. And, yes, and same this is for me when we get into like anything with like career mm -hmm. job stuff like it's really just talking and having a conversation, right? When I started with this company, I was having a wonderful experience. I was having the exper the employee experience that they, stri they would strive to have. I remember when I met you and you were having a very positive experience. Yes. You told me very, you know, you, you had nothing but wonderful things to say about where you were at at I that time. I was proud. Oh, yeah. No, you were definitely proud. I was you proud. were very proud. You spoke very highly of things and like how things were going like in you know like how the structure worked and stuff and like I loved it, it. in a yeah in a really good way and I was happy yep. for you yep but I I got lost in the sauce of that pyramid and sometimes mm -hmm. when you taste the water in uh, certain areas and it just tastes a little funky like there may be something in the water yeah you I, it's no longer Kool-Aid or you taste the like a an aftertaste of the Kool-Aid right correct. like okay I have to ask you a question only because I've experienced this before and this is I'm going to be very clear that actually where I'm at currently, um, just to start out with, I'm at, I, and I'm being very honest here. Like I would just not talk about it if I, if I didn't feel this way because I currently work where I work, mm -hmm. but I have, I am currently having actually very positive experiences, you know, having a healthy experience with my current role and where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. So the things that I'm saying that are, you know, more negative definitely relate to prior experiences. Mm -hmm. um, but I am curious for you with that overall feeling of when you started to feel like that sour taste in the back of your mouth mm -hmm. or like, <sighs> Like the start of things, did you did you also feel like it was a thing where it was like, well, I'm 
seeing this or feeling this, but it's not like me directly. Something is like a little bit of a yellow or a red flag here, but like, okay, you know, and you keep going, right? Like, yeah. And then you start to see it more directly in front mm -hmm. of your face or like it affects you. And then you're like, oh. At this point of my life, I was paid and my job description was a supervisor. Okay. There was um, an issue within the store. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I've had this. That was either the first or second Saturday of January. Mm -hmm. The following Monday. And again, like, I know that, like, we're, like, witchy people. Mm -hmm. And tarot and um, horoscopes are not bonded by word or whatever. Correct. Yeah. It's a suggestion. It's a suggestion. But the Refinery29 um, horse career horoscope for 2022 told me that on January 8th, which was literally two days before, mm -hmm. that I would have... Be, I would be fed up with my job mm. by sometime in December. It would come about that um, the people that have my best interest at heart truly don't. And that I would figure out something that I wanted to do differently by October 17th. And I remember telling Nicholas, I don't fuck. I can't fucking do this anymore. This is ridiculous. I like, I can't handle this. And I don't want to deal with this crap just to move up into the next level when that next level because of covid it was changing like the expectations of that position were changing mm -hmm. and watching my store manager at that point go through the stress that he was going through i was like i do not want that mm -hmm. and then there was a situation in june or july where i needed assistance from a different location and i was not given the assistance that i i asked for and it was I, I was like, this is what I need. And I was told, well, like your store is not making enough money right now. So I can't make that accommodation for you. And I said, <laughs> I said, I am the most tenured employee here. Everybody that is currently working here has worked here less than three, four or five months. Mm -hmm. I am the supervisor in charge and I have to go to my next job and we are in trouble. And there's only at this point, there were like three of us on the floor. I'm running a shift and dealing with the general public and trying to run a floor and crying all at the same time. Mm. And I, I, I asked myself, I said, why have I been work working towards a goal of a career when I've been like watching my dog just like age, he's 10 now going to be 11. Mm. And yeah. Like, and there was like no support in that moment. And you're like, mm -hmm. after all that I've done, like where's the support for this one Correct. moment? Like I'm, I normally, you know, do everything I can mm -hmm. to, not need added accommodations mm -hmm. i take care of my shit i figure my stuff out and you went around about it the right way right like you asked the powers that be mm -hmm. you didn't just be like yes yeah, so i'm leaving or yes yeah, so i'm calling off or you mm -hmm. didn't do anything that like you know other employees all different jobs there are you know those who would mm -hmm. go under things or do things the wrong way you know you went about it the right way and it's like mm, yeah. no yeah. Sometime between then and October, I stepped down. Uh, okay. Some things were changing internally within the store. And it was like, I made it very a, a point to say, like, I don't want to continue doing this. I'm going to figure something out. Mm -hmm. And then we were doing some like, this is our goal for the next quarter. And like moving forward with positive intent and having like a smile on our face. And then like my, mm. like my the upper management was like, those kids are really unhappy here. We got to get them to like their job. And it's like, you're not going to gaslight me into gaslighting these kids into liking their job when none of us fucking like it. Do things that'll help people like the job right. again, right? Like you need to understand, like you can't just like force someone into feeling a way like, oh, that right. in itself is so incredibly toxic. And right. that's even besides a job toxic environment. That is that in itself and any kind of gaslighting in any form. Right. I mean, that's mental manipulation. Right. And just before that meeting, we had a one-on-one -on -one where I was very open about how I felt about some things. And this individual said, I am feeling some similar things. And I felt that we were having a moment where it was like he was meeting me at my level and was like, yeah, I fully understand what you're experiencing because I'm experiencing it too. And then an hour later, we're having this meeting with the supervisors. We got to move forward with positive intent. We got to get these kids to like their job. Mm. and I was like mm -mm. and then he pulled me aside and was like what what makes you want to stay in this position and I pointed at my kids oh can I say my kids kids names really yes quick? yes 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 okay so I would like to say a shout uh, make a huge shout out to a few very lovely people 
that I left behind, and I didn't mean to leave you behind in the sense of um, abandoning any of you. However, you all knew that it was just time for me to go. So shout out to Mary, Alexis, Aubrey, her sister, uh, Sydney, which we call Squid or Squidly. <laughs> Squidly. Uh, I Aub- love that. <laughs> Aubrey's mom, Deb, you are a babe. I love you so much. Viviana, Aaron, I loved fucking with you every Friday. I would, uh, as her supervisor on the floor, mm-hmm. oh, oh, honey, like the, the things that I would say to her could have easily gotten me in, in ethics complaints. But because we <laughs> were close. Consensual joking. Yes. 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 Because okay. we were close, I got mm-hmm. away with it. Um, Lily, Natalie, Rocky, Casey, Gabby, um, Ember, and they were peers with me when uh, before, at one point and before I stepped down, but Heather and Christian Mm. and um, I used to have a really big crush on Christian. We first got hired because he's from uh, the military and Mm -hmm. he was like standing in a stance when he would be given directions and I would like, uh, it melted my heart. Mm -hmm. Heather, she's the one who she and her husband uh, drive around, drove around and listened to Taylor Swift. Oh, that's awesome. Shout out to Heather, Heather's husband. Um, I told her, I was like, I'm going to give your husband a shout out. He is so, I love that. so cute, too. I love that because um, Spencer and I did that. Maybe it's a Heather thing. Maybe. Who knows? And um, <laughs> Mary one day pulled me aside and was like, uh, because she is a woman of the Christian faith. Mm. And she was like, you know, sometimes you make comments about Christian people but like, you're really nice to me. And I just want to let you know, like, we're not all that bad. I understand that like you had a really bad upbringing and like really like in a very kind way, put me in check. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. at first I was like, I could get in trouble for this. I don't want to lose my job. Well, then it turned into, she's not wrong. I know people who are of that faith that are really nice people. And I Mm -hmm. need to stop shitting on all the people that follow that faith because there are still good ones out there. I, I would go to her to talk about, the bible and stuff because yeah. she knew that i was just interested in what she had to say in her input and she never she never passed any judgment on me yeah. both, both she and aubrey we talked about that a lot there's a set of those people in my life as yeah. well and i think it it's good i think it, it's it's because it's like it it's the media and it's the people that have yeah. power and those that are putting stuff out there yeah. right which is the unfortunate part and last year when lily got hired in right before the holiday she was talking about how she believed in santa claus and i was like mm-hmm. you still believe in santa and she goes if christians can believe in jesus i can believe in santa claus hell yes so shout out to lily for that one no pun intended on the and hell she's probably but... the biggest taylor swift fan i've, I've i know <laughs> that's awesome hands down so those were my kids and as my therapist would say i have a, a complex and a need to be a, a paternal figure for people and I need to look into that more. When I needed a second job for some extra income to pay off some debts, and I needed health insurance to get into therapy, mm-hmm. I went over to my brother's house one day, and I was like, I, I'm, I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. What can I do? And at this point, he was a store in-store manager for one of our locations, sold me on the job. I got hired in. I had the best leader I've had in any business I've ever worked for. She mm-hmm. asked me why this company, and I said, I hear you people take care of your employees. She said, yes. And I said, I will never go back to working for another corporate company unless I am taken care of because I worked for corporate companies before. Mm-hmm. And I had the best experience working with her. And then COVID happened, and I felt that we were doing really great things as a company. And then, like most other corporations, you got that new tax cut, and Everybody's taking advantage of consumerism. Mm-hmm. Once became needs, and then mm-hmm. the con- the consumerism, the consumers became terrible. Mm. Not that they were already bad, but they were worse. Mm. And you know, and then I got promoted and transferred to another store, and it was just downhill from there. Yeah, went through two store managers, a very tough customer base, mm-hmm. like and. Their customer base, they work for a, a very well-known hospital here in Fort Wayne. Mm. And it was like, I understand that you're stressed out because you're working in the hospitals dealing with probably COVID patients and COVID stress. Mm-hmm. But you don't have to come in here and treat me like that. I can say that as a healthcare person that just because you're having a rough day doesn't mean that other people aren't having a rough day too, right? right. Like It's like that empathy and remembering that. You know, if you're if you're there getting a coffee before 
a job like let's say like we're talking about all the different types of essential essential employees essential employees oh, y'all loved us the covid so much. thing the the essential employee but like really like there's so many different jobs that were essential it's not just healthcare professionals that like yes like the front lines front lines was also grocery stores front lines was also any food place that let's say a healthcare worker who had to go to their job was still going to to pick up food or drinks or whatever for their you know before their day after their day whatever and it's like okay that person also has to be at that job to serve you Mm -hmm. what you're buying so like maybe consider that they're also going through a lot of crap that they have to put up with in the middle of the pandemic too right like it doesn't invalidate like someone else's experience just because you you've had her like you're the one getting like the most attention about that experience. Right. right. Like, yeah, you know, I'm job... sorry that that happened, though, because hey. because uh, uh, since I am a healthcare professional, you know, it's like it's it sucks to hear that. And I've seen that, you know. Yeah. You know, I've been in customer service in some sort of form my entire life, my entire mm-hmm. working life. I don't really know anything other than that. So. Yeah. My, when I got my first job at 15, my dad said people are going to treat you like crap because they're the ones with the dollar in their pocket. And it has just gotten worse every year. And for people who are like, oh, just put a smile on, kill them with kindness. Hi, um, I have uh, PTSD. I can't mask my emotions mm-hmm. anymore. I can't put on a smile it when I tell people it physically hurts me oh it takes so much energy yes and for people like I had a parent who was like oh my god I can't believe you say that that's so terrible if you say that it's true it is true it it physically hurts me to be nice to people who are being mean to me I think one of the things that gets me and I, I know you sort of mentioned it but that makes it even harder to mask and particularly for employees who work for these types of companies is during COVID we saw a lot of giant corporations and retail companies mm-hmm. make a crap ton of money like oh, you yeah. said off of off of like a mix of changing rapidly changing consumerism mixed with like them going to being able to use in some ways legitimate and other times could have been an excuse of like we have to limit you know our you know our hours or we have to limit this so like they're um you reduce your overhead Mm -hmm. right but your profits are actually increasing and you're getting tax breaks and money from the government to help support because Mm -hmm. covid pandemic whatever Mm -hmm. then after that because of the rapid changes in consumerism stuff with worldwide economic issues, because the inflation thing is a worldwide problem. It has to do with a lot of different factors that even I think a lot of top economists do not understand still today because it's so unique and different related to the pandemic, related to war, all of that, that we're seeing this rapid, crazy inflation, but also there's like weird somewhat growth but also stagnation at the same time. It's all mm-hmm. this weird stuff happening, right? But the consumer is hurting. If I t- like you and I talk about like just how our finances are or like we talk to like, you know, our friends and stuff. Everyone's like, oh my God, the prices of groceries, like my, the prices of this. How much more is everyone putting on credit cards? How much more is everyone having to like rely on other sources of things that aren't actually healthy economic decisions, but we're having to, right? Which is not a good sign. We're all suffering. We're not doing so well, like when it comes to like just our day to day pockets, right? But then you see the same company be like, sorry, we can't help our employees. We can't give you raises. We can't, you mm-hmm. know, help you, even though you gave us all that you had during the pandemic, all of that energy, Mm -hmm. everything you've got so that we could like help stay, keep the company afloat. And not only that, but again, making record profits and they're not sharing that with the employees. Mm -hmm. They're not sharing that with even the consumer base and like keeping the prices down. They're like, Oh yeah, might as well increase the prices. Like in past times during inflation, Mm -hmm. corporations either, I don't, know that they were ever maybe sometimes the government helped force it i don't remember um but i believe of their own accord a lot of times they Mm -hmm. would help keep those prices down if they could it's it's so greedy now like you said like the corporate greed is just so intense and like so long winded circle back Mm -hmm. i feel as though when you were talking about like just being exhausted of having to mask that it's like 
when you're seeing that every day mm -hmm. and like we see the corporate greed and like then working for companies, you know, or a certain company that feels that way or you're seeing that evidenced in what you're doing, it's like it's hard to put a smile on your face, mm -hmm. right? Like because yeah. you're seeing all the different effects of it. You're seeing the effect of it as an employee and even as a consumer. Yeah. I know it's just standard, but like to be an employee of a business and to be interacting with a consumer and then to have to say thank you to them. Mm. why i had a conversation with my cl with a client at the salon today about this why am i thanking you for giving my boss my boss's boss money <laughs> i once i once got into um a, a, a heated debate and i did not handle it very well because i was very emotionally um tender mm -hmm. but it was on christmas and it was my father and i we were talking about uh corporations and he goes well nobody's gonna take a job from a poor man who can't pay them Okay, I understand that, but if you go to a a, cor a company that's making all of this money, mm -hmm. because they can pay, they can afford to pay you, then give me a livable wage, give me time off, give me vacation, give me health coverage. Well, for one, America, our health and our health coverage here in America is fucking ridiculous. Um, oh yeah, and it's expensive. And what are you getting for it? Exactly. At least treat me at the very bottom of this totem pole. Mm -hmm. with the same respect that you want me to treat you because without a million of me you wouldn't be where you're at yeah you know and we need to have there needs to be like an employment revolution and mm -hmm. <sighs> okay hi folks uh so i don't really know like we what we, we were just finished talking we, had, we did um a, like, a dog technical difficulty. A dog technical difficulty. I now have a pair of broken headphones that need to be replaced, and I am not going to let it uh, in interrupt the rest of our evening. I don't remember where we were at, but I know that oh, we're talking about eat the work. rich, corporate greed, bitch. Oh yeah, fuck the patriarchy. <laughs> um, it's just, fuck the patriarchy. I mean that too. Not that that was part of the conversation, but I agree. Um. <laughs> oh, something I know. I wanted to make sure I said. Um. I don't know where the statistics are, hmm. but it's very common for millennials by the time that they hit 30 to have to have had at least like 10 jobs under their belt. What? I've had. That's crazy. And that's really interesting considering what the, the stereotypical what boomers think of millennials and being like not wanting to put themselves out there and lazy and like not trying hard enough. Like if right. you had 10 jobs before the age of 30, there's. There's something going on, right. especially if that's the average. Like, that's not your abnormal employee, right? Like, that Correct. means that there's something societal going on, not just, like, a difficult employee who can't, you know, figure it out. So I've had four or five jobs. This episode was supposed to be a little bit about your journey and mm -hmm. some things that have changed and your transition away from the, this particular job, but also... Um, because of how you were feeling about certain things, you know, toxic work environments and toxic prior jobs or things that people have, you know, might have shared with us, et cetera. I'm curious to know from you and based off the research that I did, like what comes to mind to you as like someone out in the workforce as elements of like a toxic job environment like what are the things that you personally look for because my research is was heavily based on the subjective and the feelings of the employees mm, okay management is showing favoritism towards particular employees mm -hmm. and i've been that one where i was favored mm -hmm. you know yep i've on i've been on both sides as well uh, yeah in the in past jobs yeah so with this particular job, I'm not going to say I wasn't favored. I was very highly favored, but I did. A, I worked really fucking hard, so I mm -hmm. earned that. Mm -hmm. um, but favoritism towards people who are who create problems. Mm -hmm. Favoritism in the first place, mm -hmm. but then also like ass backwards, like favoritism too, where like most employees would be like, "Why? Why is this person getting the favoritism?" Yeah. On top of it, um, when there is. Uh, an inconsistency in disciplinary actions mm -hmm. throughout all employ and throughout all employees, mm -hmm. whether that be, and I don't need to know that so-and-so got written up, but don't tell somebody this is their last chance to either call off or not show up for work or call in sick when it's a, it's becoming a problem. Mm -hmm. 
they do it. And then next thing you know, they come in and they're working another shift. It's like, I thought you were, what are you doing here? I thought you were going to get fired or Mm. something that I did recently experience, not on my behalf, but watching somebody come into work, work their entire eight hour shift and then get let go at the end of their day. (gasps) Instead of just Mm. letting them go the second they walk in the door, somebody was, I mean, this individual that was let go, it was time for them to go anyway. Instead of just taking on the responsibility of saying, we need to get this shift covered, that person was still brought to the floor to work to continue to create the same problems that they always did Mm -hmm. and then was let go at the end of their day. Because people are units and numbers and commodities Mm -hmm. rather than actual human beings. Correct. Because I think about it from the end of the person that got let go to, right? Like, that's treating them pretty shitty. No matter what they did, right? Like, it's still treating them as a human being pretty shitty. Um, But also if they're, let's say you know, if they themselves are a to- are, are toxic to colleagues or something like that, mm-hmm. then continuing to allow that to take place or potentially with customers, right? Yeah. Or with like the product that you're selling, there could be yeah. something bad going on, right? And mm-hmm. like, you're continuing to allow that, like, just do everyone a favor and like, be honest and transparent mm-hmm. with that person. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If an employee says, I'm having a really bad experience, or anytime that a company says customer first, mm. customer's always right. When a business says we're going to have quarterly meetings on how to de-escalate situations because our consumers are so irate, instead of just giving somebody the authority to say, you can't talk to my employees like that. Yeah, basic human decency mm-hmm. and respect. Yeah. Because again... Your employees are human beings. They are not units or a commodity. Mm -hmm. And that, again, the corporate greed, the Mm -hmm. corporate system, and how certain companies are treating employees, particularly lately. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, it's very interesting. Yeah. There are so many things that could make, in my, in my eyes, any job or company a little, a little toxic and problematic. Well, and you, you, I mean, that matches the research that I found. Too. You did research? I did. A oh little bit. Of gosh. course. Who am I? Oh, <laughs> not, did, not me. Heather not me did research? Uh, the Aquarius. No. The, all right, girl, bitch. give it to us. Give us the stats. Well, give well, us, well. Give us the plays. Well, Forbes currently lists uh, toxic work environments as the number one reason that people do resign as of this was an article in June of 2022, so not that long long ago okay they didn't say like how long they looked at that time like or whatever but it is currently the number one reason that people do leave their job cnn and even now cleveland clinic has a health related article like a mental health um related article discussing toxic work environments and like are Mm -hmm. you in a toxic work environment how to identify that things that you can do to perhaps mitigate it or, um, you know, what's your solutions, right? Mm -hmm. A 2020 study from the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health found that toxic workplaces can lead to unnecessary stress, burnout, depression, and anxiety amongst employees. So we're talking actual, literal, you know, mental health related problems. Um, On the other hand, well-being, so like, you know, as much as we're talking about, you know, some negatives, what are the positives? So the positive side is, you know, a positive well-being can increase work performance and a supportive environment has been shown to lead to positive performance for the organization. So not just the employee, but the employer themselves do benefit from a positive well-being focused environment. But you know, again, what is that toxic work environment? And you mentioned a lot of things and saying that you think it could be many different factors. So really the definition, there is no one straightforward definition. It can be one, but usually a combination of red flags, um, negative aspects within the workplace that can eventually result in psychological and physical manifestations of an employee, a place that makes you feel uncomfortable, unwelcome, and unsupported. So do you feel psychologically and or physically unsafe? If the answer is yes, Mm -hmm. then you are working in a toxic work environment. And like various resources basically had kind of like those sorts of checklists. I actually really, I I included a link that we will have linked in the podcast description Mm -hmm. with one of these sites that talks about, you know, different aspects of work environments. What I liked about this one is that 
similar to relationships when we talk about red flags you always hear about the you hear about red flags but what are green flags too Mm -hmm. and this table is actually one that talks about different categories and what it looks like in a healthy work environment versus what it looks like in a toxic work environment so there's a bunch of them i'm not going to go over all of them but for example um, you know, with human resources, a green flag would be that the staff is valued. You know, we're talking about staff is valued as human beings, not treated like commodities, numbers, resources. Literally, the the red flag is staff is treated as a resource. Mm-hmm. Your values, beliefs, and attitudes in the company are your values, your beliefs, or your attitudes considered, or are they? obscured irrelevant and dismissed Mm. other things you know communication is it supportive assertive which also means addressing issues Mm -hmm. understanding um and really i mean i put that all together into empathy Mm -hmm. or is it defensive aggressive and passive aggressive Mm -hmm. and that can and i think a lot of times this can deal with like your straight like your equal level colleagues Mm -hmm. this can also deal a lot of time i think a lot of employees like they would relate that to you know their leaders Mm -hmm. leaders and managers right um trying to think of the term for it but um retaliation Mm -hmm. right i think of retaliation as something that's really highly toxic is your manager able to level with you and be honest with you and also take feedback appropriately or like do you have to live every day in fear that if you actually admit about something going on to your manager or or let's say hr that like they're going to actually come after you or like it comes back to you rather than you being protected and supported and doing the right thing right right i that's something that has come to my mind um with prior experience Mm -hmm. And I just, I always, I I think some of these things are really interesting. I also thought it was interesting that kind of like the little check off of like, do you feel weird about that? Like, is there like an uncomfortableness, unwelcomeness, that unsupported feeling? Like, do you just feel this weird, like you said, that weird sour taste in Mm -hmm. the back of your throat? Like something that seemed to be positive now is starting to feel like there's a little bit of poison there and then it like grows and grows and grows and like you just can't get it out to the point where you're like then you have a breakdowns or you don't want to go to work anymore or you Mm. don't want to show up or maybe you're not showing up on time because you're so stressed out about so many things actually the cleveland clinic article talked about insomnia and sleeping issues in people who are in toxic work environments and that it can lead to people who are late for work or maybe Mm. you know can't last their whole shift because they're so tired because they're not getting sleep and things like Mm. that I have had to talk about prior jobs and roles in therapy. Mm -hmm. And when I looked down this list and started to read some of the things or, you know, even just being in therapy about those, it's like if you come to find that not only you but other people that you perhaps used to work with have to talk about those same things in therapy about a certain place, perhaps it is the place. Right. It's it's the place and it's certain people that are there that are promoting a very, very toxic work environment. I mean, you should never have to go to therapy for your job, like in the sense that like where others like you go to therapy for your job related to things that you're experiencing personally. But like if it's about if you're if you're going to therapy to complain about your job. And how your job is ruining your life, then it's time for you to get out of the job. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it, I don't want to say that you shouldn't go to therapy for your job because actually that's very healthy. And being a healthcare professional, I think that is important because mm-hmm. if you're taking care of patients or you're seeing bad things mm-hmm. and, and also, you know, customers, right? We can't control customers. So not even healthcare. Right. There's going to be bad experiences in your workplace because it's part of your life. It's a huge yes. chunk of time in your day. Yeah. There are going to be negative experiences, whether that's life related, that unfortunately does make its way into your day in the job or mm-hmm. your job. It is important to go to therapy to talk about your job. But if the if you're talking about it in a way where like you are literally having like almost like PTSD trauma level yeah. experiences 
in your job role due to the people around you in your job and it's not something to do with you and your therapist is evaluating that and saying no this issue isn't you this is Mm -hmm. other people and how like and please know that you know maybe like you're getting outside uh, opinion that not other workplaces are like that Mm -hmm. you come to realize oh my god oh wow no not other places are like that Mm -hmm. i need to get out Yep. I've had to learn that. I went to my therapist. On our first appointment, I told her where I was working at, and she goes, oh, I worked there 20-some years ago. I hated working there. And mm. I started explaining to her about how it was affecting me, and she immediately was like, either you need to take a leave of absence or you need to um, you start dropping your days, mm-hmm. especially if you're going to be in therapy. And I was like, I would love to take a leave of absence, but I just stepped down over 12 weeks ago and I've already, cu- I went, I was working six days a week mm-hmm. down to one, two, three days a week towards the end of my employment. Mm. And a lot of me stepping down and taking more time off was because therapy was getting so heavy that I couldn't work the next day. Yeah. Um, which is totally normal. Nothing to be ashamed about. Yeah. No, of course. Had she told me that when I was when I was still a supervisor working mm-hmm. six days a week, five days a week, I would be like, okay, bet. Then that taking that time off would have been worth it because then I'd be getting paid 60 whatever percent of what I had been making mm-hmm. when it was so much higher. Yeah. And I was like, I feel like I'm in an abusive relationship with company X. Ooh. Oh my because gosh, the way you said that, I have literally had conversations mm-hmm. with friends and prior mm-hmm. prior negative job experiences and it, it it it's like it really is. It's like an abusive relationship. Yep. And after I was going to therapy with stuff related to my ex-husband and um prior abusive relationships, I'm like, "Wait a second. Abusive relationships and work? Wait, that's a thing?" Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like whoa okay yeah you know and i think now actually being in a healthier environment and in an environment where i feel supported Mm -hmm. seeing the green flags and even like it was funny i was like going through like the list and being like hmm you know like where are there things here like on either side or are there things like on this i'm like no these are checking you know like this is good okay like i'm not like telling myself a lie here being in that place is such a reminder that it does not have to be toxic. It does mm-hmm. not have to be abusive. So like, I almost want to say that to anyone who's listening, who is currently in that environment. Mm-hmm. And also that I'm, I'm proud of you. Like, I'm proud of you that like, you've gotten to the point where you oh, can, you. you know, move on from a situation that is no longer suited for, yeah. you know, where you're going, whether, whether it's toxic or not, but there were <laughs> toxic <coughs> There were toxic aspects of it at minimum at different times and it was getting worse and you left and that's good. Yeah. So for those out there who are still in those kinds of situations, if you can get into therapy and you're not already, Mm -hmm. um, I think both of us would encourage and support you doing that. Um, Get some unbiased opinions. In fact, like some of the articles talked about some things you can do. Talk to some friends. Start talking about it. Mm -hmm look at some of these websites like literally we have we'll have those links referenced see where you're placing you know some of your environment is it all on these red flags are some of them green and some of them red like you know that can help you make a decision just like when people make pros and cons lists um i love pros and cons lists also like nobody jumps ship true true like but but it's also the fact that you're starting to think about it Correct. that you're that you're putting that in a list to think about it and to say well and also how important are those factors right so maybe like some of the red flags are like well, that's a good not one. as big of a deal but like the pros are something that maybe you're super super passionate and two of those pros is equal to like 10 of the cons right like mm-hmm. so you have to look at it for yourself but i right. i think it's still important like if you are in a situation where you are feeling unwelcome and that every day is torture to go to your job, you know, just at least starting to talk to people about it, get some perspective, start thinking about those things. However, I do also recognize that changing jobs and leaving jobs, that's a privilege, right? Like, especially considering all that we're talking about with economics oh, in yes. this episode. You know, I was very blessed. This time period is not easy for anyone and I say that even in healthcare like I 
I, I'm struggling at times. And, you know, everyone is struggling on different levels. It, maybe, some, and of course, certainly some, not at all. But, like, I think a lot of regular, everyday people are struggling mm -hmm. to different levels. And perhaps leaving a position or leaving a job is not, is not the best right now. But perhaps if you can get yourself into a place to m sort of make that decision or make a decision for the future, that helps you prep yourself for a different role or a better role because if you if you get yourself into that mindset of I'm going to make a change like you did in the next year you can set yourself up to say okay do I want to on the side learn some extra skills mm -hmm. to get myself set up for something new is it going to be something that is a better position within the role within the type of career I already have or are we talking changing up your entire career or just a total different job completely if so you know take that time to start thinking about the things that you need like go for it though make the decision to go for it instead of sticking with the status quo if that status quo is something that's abusive and I like straight up abusive yeah yeah and when I said I was blessed so I got very lucky with my timing of getting the job because mm -hmm. it was right before COVID that was deemed essential. My business was not, mm -hmm. I would actually with as little money as I was spending, leaving my apartment during the lockdown time, lockdown season, as I always call it, I was able to work as much as I wanted with other, with the other company and I could get all the overtime I wanted. They paid us extra per hour and I had more money in my checking account than I have had in my entire life. And it kept me afloat when I couldn't work my other business. And it gave me health insurance and the ability to go to a therapist. But it continued to perpetuate the fact that, like, the general public sucks. And mm -hmm. even, and you know, it again, just the new wave of management that is being formed right now within that company. It's customer, 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 not employee anymore. And there is no point in me sticking around. I really hate that certain companies are really placating to like the to toxic customer bases too, because like yeah. it again, in a way, it like it circles around to promoting the okay of a lack of respect and a lack of integrity with human beings as a whole because that customer is also an employee somewhere else they're getting the okay to treat other people that way which is then how they probably also may treat other people in their own personal life mm -hmm. as well as on the job right, right. in their own job right. i am so Oh, so frustrated with the Amer with America specifically. I'm sure it is also potentially in other countries, but I know we this problem has really come to the forefront with the 2020 stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, and I know it's like <laughs> we don't. <laughs> there are nice Karens out there, but like the stereotypical Karen is what you're talking about, right? The to the toxic customer base. It's just Karens, but Chad, but it's Susans. those people in general and they're given the okay to act like that in any format in society yes, it's just it needs to stop and like th they have been trained to believe that they will get what they want as they'll long get rewarded as they'll get rewarded as long as they complain yeah. it's like it's like rewarding a toddler who had a temper tantrum do we yeah. do that no 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 hey. any good any parent with any semblance of effort whatsoever is like no of course i'm not going to reward my child who just did something bad of course i'm not going to reward my child who threw a temper tantrum i'm going to figure it out in the best way that i know you know with my kid but certainly you don't like go and hand them a popsicle for you know doing something that was wrong right like that's Correct. that's not how we parent so but we why are we allowing that in an adult who's throwing a temper tantrum, right? Like, why are we handing them a $5 gift card for the inconvenience of them throwing a temper tantrum? Oh, right. Right? Like, you're oh. making me late to my job because I decided to stop here on a Friday morning knowing damn well that everybody else and their mother are going to be in here buying the same thing that I am. And you know that we are busy. Social media makes fun of how people are late to hair appointment hair appointments doctor's appointments therapy appointments anything mm -hmm. because oh sorry i had to stop by and go get my insert business name here and now <laughs> i'm late 
And I also probably got this for free because I yelled at some 16-year-old kid who came in and opened this. Well, okay, you can't be 16 opening up a store. <laughs> but you can you, you can be quite young mm-hmm. and opening going into a location and being there at 4, 4.30 a.m. sometimes, opening up a spot. And it's, yeah, and all, yep. Hey, uh, if you are trying to be somewhere on time, and you make a stop for a little treat, give yourself three times the amount of time to pick that treat up. Yes. Or plan ahead. I'm guilty don't expect, of not doing that, but I also don't expect people to be understanding of it. <laughs> if you don't understand how time, how the concept of man-made time works. Man-made time. Man-made time. Do we you can know, I mean, it. okay, can we go really deep here for a second? Because I'm an Aquarius. Time mm. itself in a way, is a concept made I, by man. I know. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's going to be... I had to talk about it. I'm sorry. I had to bring are, it up. Are you guys interested in, like, a uh, deep dive? Cons- not necessarily conspiracies, but, like, uh, well, yeah, I mean... Like, time is a word, right? That was created time, by man. Time's a concept. You're, like, you're like rolling your eyes at me. I'm sorry. I know. I, I knew exactly <laughs> that you were going with that. Because time is not a man-made concept. Time is here, now, then, the future. It's all present. Mm-hmm. It's all it's all in one moment. It's how our species views it, right? Because and experiences we, it, right? Because if we didn't, if we knew the truth, yeah. If I was an alien, would, would I be game. experiencing it in the same way? <laughs> <laughs> the quintessential Aquarius. <laughs> So, but I, so I did get some positive things out of it. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. got some, I got some serious friends for life. I truly do. Good, think, good. I truly do think that I will have those, those kids of mine will be in my life for they a very you long time. Thank you, thank they you to Jaren's kids for keeping him up on the things. <laughs> I don't like the fact that when I went to Aaron and was trying to explain to her the corn song, she goes, "That was two weeks ago." Yeah, and I was like. You and know what's really funny is I told you the not... same thing, and you're like, the the kids that told me the same thing. <laughs> yes, it was two weeks ago. Like, oh, it's it's cut, not done, sorry, you guys. Cut that. I said, cut it out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the kids. Uh, that... So okay, I'm saying this out loud so you okay. remember to cut it. Please okay. cut it. Sorry, <laughs> Heather accidentally said the name of the company I used <laughs> to work for. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming for you, Jared. They're coming for you. <laughs> Again, folks, if you're really that invested and you haven't figured it out yet, we can talk about it another time, okay? Maybe <laughs> one day I'll just accidentally drop it. But um, So do you want to have a quick, like, 10-minute uh, bonus episode on some fun uh, Karens in the workplace Reddit stories real briefly? Okay, hey, guys, so terribly sorry. We are at, like, two-plus hours of recording. Heather and I have done <laughs> a lot of talking tonight. We are going to be releasing a bonus episode of some – more juicy Karen, Chad, customers, job content. Um, let's go ahead and say we will do that on Wednesday mm-hmm. because we cry on Fridays now like the mean girls wear pink on Wednesdays. <laughs> so we are going to have to cut this a little short, right? Not cut this short. It's been a really long episode. So we are going to go ahead and say goodbye and that we love all of you. And thank you again for listening this week. We really appreciate it. Yeah, um, it's been a good one today. It has been a very good one. Uh, there, I've noticed that we've gotten a significantly. There has been a big jump in our downloads over awesome. this last week in general. Well, and thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. Uh, remember, rates and reviews and follows and downloads really help us grow in the charts. You would like for us to continue doing this. Those are the things that you can do to support and help us out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this is, um, so yeah, you will hear from us next week. And, uh, again, we love you. And, uh, this two, this employee number two, six, nine, four, four, six, six is signing out. Oh, love it. <laughs> love you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.